two plays because, uh, again, should they not score this time, then time becomes their biggest enemy. Should they score here, then they, they still have a little bit of a cushion. You've got to assume, and again, we're talking seven minutes, maybe two more possessions right. each team uh, can, depending on a, a long drive. So uh, there's still that opening, but it's almost a do-or-die drive this time. Ninth play of the drive comes up for the Hillbillies. Mark Anico skips to the outside, and when the pressure was on, the Hillbillies respond. Good move. Good move by Mark. He froze that linebacker. Two, two steps up, one step toward the linebacker, froze him, and then broke to the outside. Glenn Ridge seemed to relax that play. I didn't see anybody coming. 19 to 12. Now, once again, we got to play. It seems like every time I keep saying, this is a key play. Why, you know, they get these two points, and they're big. Martino, screen to Anico, and he can't hold on. Just over his fingertips, and so the score will stay, 19-12. Well, they're still within striking distance. Seven points for a tie, and once again, if they score again, they go for the two-pointer. They could win the ball game. There's the run by Mark here, Anico. Here that was the big the move safety. right there at the 10. Bruce froze the safety and then broke to the outside. And he's a sophomore, you know. He's going to be back for two more years, that Anico fella. 19-12. With time enough, you know, this happens to be a very good high school football game. A little sloppy, but it's nobody's fault that it's sloppy. It's, uh, unless you want to blame the weatherman. But they're playing hard-nosed football. The hitting's good, the running's good. All right, Bill. Glad Ridge is anticipating a short kick. They've got nine players up within 10 yards. And then Sasir is standing at about the 25. They get a short pooch type kick. It is fielded in the air by Jackson, and Jackson runs it out of bounds. Yeah, he wants to play it safe, I guess. A reminder that, uh, well, one of the big soccer games in New Jersey played just a few days ago. You'll get a chance to see again on TV3. It's already been on. Westfield takes on Scotch Plains. That big watch on conference rivalry can be seen election evening at 8.30 and then Wednesday the 3rd at 10 a.m. I hope it's over by the time we start election coverage at 10.30. It was a long game. I'll tell you that it does go into overtime. And a reminder that election coverage on TV3 starts at 10.30 election night. 10.30 or whenever the Glen Ridge, the uh, Scotch Plains Westfield game is over. Fumble! Second down, Glenn Ridge recovered, and that was the one thing that Duke Mendez did not want to see. There's a lead block by the fullback, you know. It's just a simple handoff. The handoff's made. The ball's slippery. I guess the handoff isn't made. No, but The handoff comes late on the hip, you know. The quarterback's got to look that ball in there, especially with weather the way it is. Quarterback's got to look the ball in there. Quarterback's got to put the ball in there. Timing's a little little different, you know. A little slower getting back. You gotta compensate. You gotta move a little quicker. Second and eleven. This lead. time the sure give to Jones. Lead block, lead block by the fullback. That fullback's a pretty good blocker, too, you know. Nineteen to twelve our score. As it says on the Paul Spahala officially run scoreboard. I think Bob Hillenbrand, the AD at uh, Glen Ridge, might uh, send me a check. Uh, can, I'm, I'll, not, a, I'll I'm not a carded official. But, I'll uh, suggest it to him. <laughs> yeah, you're working the clock for sure. The other fellow that's supposed to work the clock. Well, he's working the clock. I'm working the scoreboard. He's Third and stairs. Yeah, he's keeping the time. You're working the clock. Townsend looking to throw. Straight fly pattern. Incomplete. Intended for Sasir. He slipped when he had to stop and, and wait for the ball. Cole went up for it. He was knocked off the ball by Sasir. 
Good and coverage Ruby, by Cole. Fourth yeah. down. Good coverage by Cole that time, Mark. He was right with him all the way. Once again, it's man coverage. And in weather like this, that's tough because you slip. You slip just a little bit, you know, and, and forget about it. It's uh, You're in trouble. Here comes a, a dangerous play, as all punts are, all snaps are, in wet weather. Goes back to Ben Savani. He kicks it away. And the ball will stop at the 35, so it will be first and 10 there for the Hillbillies. It they trail be, by seven. It would be nice to know how much time well, we're left. I, I was just about to say, I don't recall getting a four-minute warning. No. So at the very least, we have more than four minutes to go, so we have not received the official four-minute warning. Again, official time being kept down on the field. Verona has 65 yards to go. Mark Anico now the wing back. The give is to Dave Anico. Skips through one tackler, fighting his way forward. And finally, six or seven different Ridgers combined for the tackle. But it is good first down yardage for the Hillbillies. A gain of five on the play. It will be second and five. Official timeout. And you're exactly right. There were about six or seven Ridgers that, that brought him down. He popped off three or four of them. You know, I keep saying that. They can't wrap up the ball play. They should be wrapping up the ball carrier. Well, it's hard to wrap them up because they're sliding off, you know. it's They're muddy. And, and they're, they're making contact and they're sliding. Well, like I say, the good thing about a game like this is the losers can always say, well, had, had the weather been nice, we would have won. And I believe now we have, and we are giving the four-minute warnings to each benches as the official goes over to talk to the two head coaches to let them know not only the four minutes, but I believe to also let them know of timeouts. And the timeout situation is Glen Ridge 2, Verona 3. So that's what happens, the four-minute warning and talking to the benches about the remaining timeouts. Verona with three, Glen Ridge with two. Second and five for the Hillbillies. This one turned out to be an exciting one, and we've been able to see the whole second half. Mark Anico. He's got first down yardage. Just a simple dive play to the right halfback. I guess they're, they're keying Anico so much. You're looking at Anico so much that Every time they get they get a handoff to somebody beside Anico, why uh, they kind of ignore him until he's by the line of scrimmage. Good handoff right here. Good block up front. A couple of good blocks up front. Mark, a sophomore, and younger a hard brother runner. of three-year starter Dave Anico. First and ten, approximately 3:30 left in the game. Fumble. Verona ball. I wish I could read the number of the fellow that fell on the ball. It is Jennings, Kevin Jennings. Jennings. Uh, good football player. Ken Jennings. Kenny Excuse Jennings, me. good football player. Both those ends are, are good football players. And that time Jennings was in the right spot. Watch, he throws his block, and then he's down on the ground to make the recovery. Second and 10. That was a saving recovery for Jennings by Jennings for Verona. Back in the wing T formation. Play action pass. Incomplete. It's a hard ball to throw. Paul, I'll tell you what I used to do in a day like today. I'd have two rubber balls. I'd have a bucket of water on the sidelines. I'd have one person whose job it was to wash the ball and dry it and get it in there after every play. We just keep rotating a rubber ball. The rubber seems to be a little tackier than that leather. That leather right now is very slippery. Third down and 10. Two big plays due up for the Hillbillies. The incompletion, of course, stops the clock. Martino rolling right pressure is on from Heckel. And Heckel hits him on the run. Is it a free ball or an incomplete pass? It is being called a fumble 